So, I am not here to tell you that the oceans are not in trouble, okay? The oceans are facing a number of severe threats. Climate change is a big problem, plastic pollution is a big problem, and yes, overfishing is a big problem. But I am here to tell you that the latest documentary, Netflix documentary, called Sea Spiracy, does have a lot of misinformation, untruths, and is a very one-sided view of all of the threats that face the ocean. For those who don't know, my name is Chantelle, I am a marine biologist, I'm a scientist, and so as I was watching this documentary, there were a lot of things that cropped up and I was like, that doesn't sound quite true. Um, and this really irks me because I think uh, misinformation and our devaluation of the truth as a society has become a serious issue. If you want some more information on this side note, this is a very, very good book. But yeah, so I just wanted to offer some alternative thoughts to the Seaspiracy documentary. I mean, I think the overall message is a good one and a clear one. Overfishing is an issue. We should probably reduce our consumption of fish. But I do want to tackle some of the untruths or misinformation that is said within the documentary. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please smash the like button and let's get into it. Okay, so the first untruth is probably the easiest to debunk, and that is that we will have no more fish in our oceans by 2048. This is some research that he quotes in the Seaspiracy documentary. And I'm here to tell you that this is not true, okay? I need you to take this number, throw it out of your brain, and just forget you ever heard of it. So what happened here was, I think it was back in 2006, some scientists published a research paper and there was a lot of really cool other information within this research paper, but one of the things they did was that they modeled the historical declines in fish abundance and they modeled it into the future and the model spit out that by the year 2048 there would be no more fish in the ocean. Okay, but this is the beauty of the scientific process. These scientists published their paper, a whole bunch of other scientists had a look at it and they said, hang on, this isn't right. You're assuming a whole bunch of stuff in this model that isn't true. They published some research on it and the original authors of the paper then actually retracted their paper and they said, okay, hang on, you guys are right, we were wrong, this model is incorrect. So even the authors who put that number out there no longer stand behind that number. I think you would be hard pressed, I think it would be impossible to find a scientist who still believes that there will be no more fish in the ocean by 2048, okay? As I said at the beginning, I'm not saying the oceans are not in trouble, there are a lot of species whose numbers are still declining, who are still in a lot of trouble, but we will still have fish in our ocean by the year 2048. So the next issue is a bit more complicated, but it's to do with the whole idea of sustainable fishing. So within the documentary, Ali says that, um, you know, there's no definition for sustainable fishing and he kind of comes to this conclusion that a sustainable fishery cannot exist. Okay, and I'm here to tell you that neither of these things are true. So first of all, there is a definition of a sustainable fishery. And in a very easy to understand way, this is what the European representative that he talks to does. You know, he makes the analogy of a bank and you put a lump sum into a bank and then you only withdraw the interest that accrues rather than touching the lump sum. That's what a sustainable fishery is. Um, in more complicated scientific terms, you know, scientists have developed these really complicated fisheries model, but at the end of the day, they come to a number which is called a maximum sustainable yield, which is the amount of fish that you can take out of the population without um, reducing the population. So they'll still be the same number of next year. Because the thing you have to remember with fish um, and their reproductive strategies is that they produce more than what is going to survive. So fish lay thousands and thousands of eggs um, and their whole strategy depends on the fact that they produce way too many they know most of them are not going to survive so if we can just take that excess and harvest that excess that is exactly a sustainable fishery and they do exist i mean according to the united nations food and agriculture organization about two-thirds of our fisheries are currently managed at a sustainable level i mean if you have a bit of a hesitancy to trust numbers, 
The numbers actually don't really matter at the end of the day. Or maybe they are less than two thirds that are being sustainably harvested due to illegal fisheries and unregulated fisheries and all that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, sustainable fisheries do exist. And it's kind of up to you to demand or it's not up to you, it's up to us. It's up to, up to us as consumers to demand transparency from fisheries so that we can know exactly how our fish was caught, where our fish was caught, if it's been scientifically assessed and if we know it's coming from a sustainable fishery, that is the information we need to make responsible decisions when it comes to making fish. And yes, I do think we should all reduce our fish consumption because I mean, a lot of our fisheries are being overfished, but sustainable fisheries can and do exist. And those are the ones that we should be consuming from. Think for yourself what you are comfortable with. Maybe you don't want to eat fish anymore and that's totally fine. You are totally allowed to make that choice. I know a lot of people that don't eat fish, um, but at the same time, don't feel bad if you've done your homework and you know the fish you are eating comes from a sustainable fishery because they do exist. Okay, so the next big topic has to do with the importance of certain animal groups that he talks about in the documentary. So we're first going to tackle whale poop and phytoplankton, and then after that we're going to tackle the importance of sharks in the ecosystem. So he kind of starts off the whole documentary about his journey and how he fell in love with the oceans and whales and dolphins through, you know, whale and dolphin captivity. Um, and then he kind of goes on the, his story and he eventually ends up by saying basically that um, phytoplankton is very important because it takes a lot of carbon out of the ocean, out of the atmosphere, which is 100% true. Um, but then he goes on to say that basically the poop from dolphins and whales is what the phytoplankton needs to do this. So without whales and dolphins, we're going to have no more phytoplankton and the seas are going to die and we are going to die. Okay, <laughs> that is definitely not true. So I think what he's referring to is a study that was done on blue whales in the Southern Ocean. So phytoplankton need iron. It's one of the nutrients they need to photosynthesize. And the Southern Ocean is known to be a very iron deficient region. So this paper looked at blue whales that move through the Southern Ocean. If the number of blue whales increased, this is the amount of iron that would be in the Southern Ocean. And this could potentially lead to phytoplankton blooms all great and well. But the thing is phytoplankton mostly gets most of their nutrients, including iron, from various other physical processes. So most of the nutrients they get comes from something called upwelling, which is when deep, cold, nutrient-rich waters comes up from the bottom of the ocean to the surface, or from gaseous exchange at the surface between the atmosphere and the ocean, or from freshwater runoff from streams. Like there's a lot of other places that phytoplankton get most of their nutrients from. I'm not saying that whales and dolphins are not gonna have an effect, but they are definitely not the largest contributors. And while whales and dolphins do play important roles in ocean ecosystems, they really don't play important roles of phytoplankton. So that was just like a really weird link, which I don't quite know why he made. Um, and so I just wanted to clarify that. And another weird link that he talks about has to do with sharks. Well, it's not weird. It's, um, and I wouldn't say it's not true, but it's hotly debated in the scientific community is the whole role of sharks. So they explain it really great in the documentary and they say, you know, sharks are top predators. If you remove the top predator, then there's nothing eating the next guys in the food chain. They grow, their population grows. And because there's too many of them, they overeat all of the next thing in the food chain. So they die out. So it unbalances the whole ecosystem. Now, there are no real definitive studies showing that sharks play a role in this phenomenon, which is called a trophic cascade. So you have a cascade of effects through your trophic or your food chain. Okay, there have been a couple of papers that suggest it. Um, a couple of them have been refuted. So actually I did a video way back in the day when I started my YouTube channel. You're more than welcome to go watch it, but it's really terrible. But it's basically about a paper that came out Oh gosh, I think it was in 2008 that showed that the decline of shark populations in the US um, then caused an increase in the number of cow nose rays, which is like a stingray, which is in the middle of the food chain, which um, then caused a collapse in the scallop fishery because cow nose rays eat scallops. This was shown basically to be untrue again, you know, through the scientific process. Other scientists looked at it and said, hang on, that's, that's not correct. Um, and there are a number of studies that 
that refute the claims that reef sharks play an important role in coral reefs. The thing you, ha you have to know about marine food chains is that they are super complicated. They're much more complicated than land food chains. So while trophic cascades um, definitely do happen on land, in marine food webs, there are just so many levels and so many animals within the level so that if one, you know, gets booted out, then there's another one to take its place. So the food chains are just much more complicated and there have been no simple cases where the exploitation of one leads to the increase of, of the other leads to the decrease of the next one, at least in terms of sharks and coral reef sharks and all that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm not saying that sharks are not important. They are definitely important. But this again, this whole linking to trophic cascades is hotly debated and it's just something I wanted to talk about because I love sharks and rays and this is what I research and I just wanted to put that message out there. Take it or leave it, but it's hotly debated in the scientific community. Okay, so the final big issue I wanna tackle is that the fishing industry is blamed for every single thing going wrong in the ocean, which again is just simply not true, okay? I'm not saying commercial fisheries are the good guys. I do think they are the bad guys. Um, I think uh, commercial fisheries have a lot of negative impacts on the ocean, for sure. Bycatch is an issue. Uh, trawling and habitat destruction is an issue. Overfishing. I mean, I didn't even know about that slavery and fishing thing. That was crazy. And um, I have now learned that that, that happens. So yeah, these illegal fisheries and these slavery and fisheries, that's really, that's cuckoo kachu and that's super bad. Really important issues that we need to tackle and talk about and think about, which is something I'm really grateful that this documentary did, but not everything that is bad in the ocean is because of fisheries. So the first example I'd like to highlight here is that he speaks about the Great Pacific um, garbage patch and how almost 50% of the plastic in this garbage patch is fishing nets. Um, and okay, that is maybe true. I actually haven't checked the statistic. Um, and he goes on this whole long rampage about how NGOs are not doing anything um, to tackle fisheries, which is just simply not true. And my very good friend, Marine did a review of Seaspiracy and she talked a lot about this issue. So I highly recommend you go check out her review. But basically you cannot extrapolate what is happening in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch to the whole world. If you're looking on a global scale, only 10% of plastic pollution comes from fishing vessels, fishing nets, fishing rope, that sort of thing. 80% of it comes from land-based resources. Um, so 80% of it comes from you and me and everybody else that lives on land. It's got nothing to do with fisheries. So please, don't stop worrying about your plastic consumption and trying to reduce your plastic consumption because it makes a huge difference. Reducing your straws, reducing your plastic bags, everything like that does make a difference. And I really don't like the way the documentary downplays that because it's an important issue in the ocean and your choices really do make a difference there, okay? Secondly, this is, was quite a quick, um, quick mention in the documentary, but it really irked me. And it was that turtles are threatened with extinction. Their numbers have declined because of bycatch. Again, this is, is not true. Um, so historically, turtle populations have declined drastically, but that is because of historical exploitation of eggs and uh, adult females. So um, people would um, eat the eggs they'd go dig out the nests or they'd kill the females, the adult females for meat or for the shell because especially the hawksbill turtle because their shells are so beautiful. So it's through this historical exploitation that led to the major declines in turtle populations. Today, yes, they are caught as bycatch in fishing nets um, and by commercial fisheries and this is hampering their recovery but it is by no means the sole and main purpose why turtle numbers declined and actually fisheries there are some good ones out there and they are doing a lot to try and reduce their turtle bycatch so there's this really cute invention called a turtle exclusion device which is like a little box in the net that a turtle can escape through so they are trying to reduce their turtle bycatch um, it is still an issue, but it's not the major reason why turtles have declined. Finally, coral bleaching. Why he even brought this up, I do not know. So coral bleaching is definitely an issue in the ocean, but this is because of temperature. Okay, so this is 
a commonly accepted scientific fact. We know that if temperatures in the, in the ocean increase beyond a certain level for a certain amount of time, corals die, coral bleaching happens. Um, so that is not because of fisheries, that is because of temperature and climate change, okay? Fisheries do have a negative impact on coral reefs and affect their health, but not, not because of coral bleaching. So that is all I wanted to say about sea spiracy. Um, there is probably a lot more I could say, but those were the major issues that kind of really stood out for me and irked me the most. Um, there has been a big outcry from the scientific community over this documentary. Um, and so I just wanted to clarify a few myths, truths, suggest some alternative ways of thinking about the issue because it is obviously a very one-sided documentary so this is just some you know extra bits for you to fan out your thinking and have a broader picture of what's going on um i really hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions or comments you're more than welcome to leave it down below but i know this documentary has brought really a mean side out of a lot of people and a lot of people have become very um attacky and hateful towards scientists and anybody who speaks out against it so if if you put a comment like that down below i'm not going to respond to it i'm probably just going to delete it but if you have constructive and helpful criticism if you have a really useful remark if you have a ever have a question please feel free to leave it down below and i will reply to it so yeah that's it from my side for now until next time please stay healthy stay safe and consider reducing your fish consumption because it's probably a good choice for the ocean.